Grace and peace of our Lord and Jesus of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto those in which are in the household of faith. I've been working really hard these past couple months, brothers and sisters, laboring hard for the kingdom of heaven, and I hope you guys are too. For Jesus says he will judge everyone according to his works. He will render unto every man according to as his deeds shall be. Brothers and sisters, let's continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and not follow the error of the wicked. So please follow me in this teaching, brothers and sisters, for it would be very long. I spend many hours putting this together. Glory to God. I give God the glory, honor, and praise in all the worship for using me as a mouthpiece, as an oracle, as a vessel of sanctification and honor. I, you know, I stay in the fear of the Lord all the day long, brothers and sisters. And I get these messages to give on to you because the truth shall set you free. All right, my brothers and sisters, there's a lot of heresies um, in which are going abroad on the internet. False pastors and teachers who are ministering lies to you. Unless they repent, uh, they all likewise shall perish, says Jesus. Brothers and sisters, it is a very important matter, brothers and sisters. And when I, when I study, I mean it. I study very hard to show myself approved unto God, brothers and sisters. And this is how I've always been. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a deep thinker and I'm a deep learner. And I dive deep into matters, brothers and sisters. I want you guys to be set free by the deceptions that are spread abroad in the internet. Some people say you don't need works to be saved. Some people say your works-based salvation. Some people don't understand the concept of, of when Paul the Apostle would often say we are now saved by works, right? But he's talking about the works of the flesh, the works of the law, the works of Moses. So I want us to be able to discern and differentiate the difference between faith and works. Because a lot of people say all you have to do is believe, which is true. Jesus, you know, God's will is for us to believe on his son. But you understand that believe is not just some something in which you just can say and not, you know, put into action, brothers and sisters. It's just like a word without action. It's meaningless. Like you would be all walk and no talk. You want to be the walk and the talk, brothers and sisters. Jesus gave me this uh, analogy or like a little uh, metaphor. He's like, imagine those in which they only say by faith, not of works. It's like saying a car, I have a car, but I don't have no gas. All right. Don't you think a car with gas makes a difference? Don't you think that's beneficial or effective for you to get places? Or imagine having gas and no car. Brothers and sisters, there's a lot of people also in uh, dead works religions and denominations in which are followers of the Torah or followers of keeping commandments or thinking by their good deeds or their good alms deeds that they're going to be saved without Jesus Christ. And this is complete error. So I want to expose those things of and which are uh, kept people in darkness for so long. I want to I want to keep you guys um, enlightened with the truth, brothers and sisters, because if we have these things, uh, we will give God more of. Uh, um, we will have to answer to God, brothers and sisters, those in which have the word of God. And I fear the Lord, and I desire to fear Him daily, brothers and sisters. And I take His word very serious. All right, brothers and sisters, I might not have many people on this channel. Uh, and it's all right because many few are in the uh, on the narrow way, but many are in the broad way, brothers and sisters. All right, and I, I give God the glory for whoever He's given uh, to me on this channel because it, he or she belongs to Christ. All right, brothers and sisters. So we have to, you know, remember that those in which desire are our masters, teachers, whatever they are, over the people, overseers, over the flock, they shall have the greater damnation. All right, and I know that I, I will be, if I'm given much in abundance, I will have to give God um, an account for everything, brothers and sisters. And it is not fun to be in the hands of a living God. The Bible says it's a fearful thing. So, however, let's get down to the matters and talk about, you know, the things in which people think that you're adding on to salvation. This is not true. Some people will say, hey, you're adding works to salvation. Jesus finished it at the cross. Yeah, Jesus did finish it at the cross, but Jesus didn't finish it at the cross for you to continue to be a slothful and unprofitable servant who doesn't bear fruit. All right, brothers and sisters, he didn't say, you know, uh, he finished it at the cross for you to just go and live however you want or however you please or to continue in your sins or to continue in the works of your flesh. 
That's not what Christ died for. Christ died for his own, for his, um, the people in which God gave to him, those in which he knew would be his. He died for the world, giving them a chance to come back to him, to be redeemed by him, that they might be saved if they chose him. All right, that he had a plan of salvation, a plan of um, uh, a, uh, an inheritance for you, a redemptive uh, um, plan for you, brothers and sisters, to purchase you with his blood. But again, just because you're saved by his blood does not mean you can continually live in that uh, a habitual sin for that matter. So we're going to cover certain things. I want to get down to um, people which say, all you got to do is believe. Or those people which say, you know, um, you are teaching works. I want to get down to the matters and to the issues in which are taking place in the churches today because I know that that once saved always saved that dogma and that heresy is true Jesus said many will say unto me Lord Lord I mean those were Christians those are not atheists saying Lord Lord right and he will say uh, depart from me I never knew you those words right there should tell you that you know a castaway even a Christian can be a castaway so there's no such thing as you know eternal self like for example um you're eternally secure if you walk away from Jesus, you can lose it. If you turn away from your ways, it says when a righteous man departed from his ways and goes back to his sins, all those things that he did would be forgotten. He shall, surely shall perish with those, his righteous deeds and his righteous works. All of it would perish with him if he goes back to his slothful ways and his sins. So again, brothers and sisters, I mean... Uh, it's just a lot of heresies, a lot of things in which I'm seeing. People say, you know, you're, these people are adding on to salvation. Why? Because Jesus said that we must be born again. How is that adding? So be careful for these people who have a false Jesus or a false conversion, my brothers and sisters. And also be careful for those who think like they're under the, the Torah. Those, I'm sorry, those in which are under the Torah, the Catholics in which think they're, you know, I feel sorry for them. Some are uh, unknowingly deceived or some know that they, you know, are committing Knowingly or unknowingly, they know they're committing idolatry, brothers and sisters, whether they know it or they don't. That's dead works to God because they're following another Jesus. The Torah keepers, they're following the God of the old covenant in which God had manifest himself through his son. Um, so, you know, again, God had um, revealed his son, his perfect law of liberty. So these people are also under dead works. Islam, those in which follow the Quran and those in which follow, you know, another uh, Mahdi, another Jesus, or they believe that Jesus was a prophet, although he was, but they don't believe he was the son of God. They also have another God, they have a false God, and they think that by visiting the Mecca or doing elms that they will see the pearly gates. Those are dead works. Mormons, those who have another Jesus, they have a false Jesus, uh, a Jesus that's not the Jesus of the Holy Scriptures in the Bible. Jehovah Witnesses, they think that Jesus is us. Uh, Archangel Michael, a, a atheists, agnostics, the Seventh-day Adventists. So these people are completely heretics. You are to not, like you are to reject an heretic. Greek Orthodox, those in which, you know, combine Catholicism with Christianity. They have the, the works of, you know, the pictures and the paintings of who knows who those people are, and they go there and they worship those images too. So that's almost like they give themselves uh, the title of Christians, but they're like almost like Catholics. So again, brothers and sisters, that's heresy, dead works, science, philanthropists, or people that say, I'm a good person, I don't have to believe in God, I help the poor, I do all these good things. People who say, I don't need Jesus. I mean, God knows if he is real, they would say, oh, he knows that I'm a good person. I help the poor. So these are people who justify, you know, their works by, you know, denying the Son of God, by having faith in Christ. So, again, we got to look at everything in context. What was Paul talking about? Was he talking about the works that you bear or the fruits that you bear by abiding in Christ? Or was he talking about the works of the law? Those in which think they are righteous, their self-righteousness, and which comes by keeping the Torah or keeping the Ten Commandments without Jesus Christ. So come on, every, everybody. We have to look at things all in context and not allow people to deceive us. All right, my friends? So I want to cover some certain things. Faith. Let me go through some scriptures. What does the Word of God say about good works? In case some people are wondering, so where can you find, you know, works? Where can you find all these works? I'm going to go through 1 Timothy 5.10. I'm going to go through 1 Timothy 5.25. 1 Timothy uh, uh, 3.17. Um, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 6.18. 2 Timothy 3.17. 
I'm going to go through Titus 2, 7, 2, 14, and 3, 8. 3, 14, I'm going to go through Hebrews 10, 24, James 2, 14, and 3, 13. Brothers and sisters, 1 Peter 2, 12, 1 John 3, 12, Jude 1, 11, Titus 1, 16, and 2 Corinthians 11, 15. I want to go through some things in which will reveal, you know, because uh, some people say that you don't need works. So let's just cover this right here, faith. Right? What does the scriptures talk about when it concerns faith? And you can find the faith chapter in Hebrews, uh, chapter 11. The whole faith chapter. All right? I've read it before. So, James tells us even the devils believe and tremble. You hear that, brothers and sisters? Even the devils believe and tremble. James says here, there believest that thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. What doth it profit, my brethren? He says, though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? James 2.14. So let me go through here where he says, even the devils tremble and the devils, even the devils believe. Let's see the account in Matthew 8.29. What does Jesus say here? He says right here, and behold. So Jesus comes to heal a man in which was possessed with devils. Two devils. So Jesus says right here, Behold, they cried out. Who cried out? The devils. They cried out saying, What have we to do with thee? So the devils even cried out saying, What do we have to do with thee? Jesus, thou son of God, art thou come hither to torment us before our time? So they even were terrified and thought, Oh, wow, Jesus is Jesus. They even knew that the name of Jesus, the son of God, even devils trembled and believed. But these people say, all you have to do is believe. I mean, don't the devils believe? Does that, give, does that mean they're saved? Does that mean that they have come to salvation? I mean, even the devils believe that Jesus is the Son of God. All right? So you say, you know, you believe you do well. But so do the devils. They also believe too. So, you know, again, this is showing you that even devils believe. I mean, what, what good is it if you, ha if you have words without deeds? If you have words without actions? I mean, don't words have to complement actions? Doesn't gas have to complement a car or a car complement with gas? So, brothers and sisters, you can also see the, clearly the account uh, manifests where the devils even cried out and believed that Jesus is the Son of God. So, again, does that mean there's hope for them or they're, you know, they, they're, they're going to be saved? Absolutely not. They're unclean spirits. They were cast down to swine. And they ran down, the herd ran down the swine. They ran down and they drowned themselves in the, in the, uh, um, in the water, brothers and sisters. So again, um, I want you guys to understand that uh, Jesus is very serious about this matter for those in which are like uh, misinterpreting or twisting the scriptures to their destruction. And then they think they're going to be raptured out of here. These people are delusional. They are reprobates. Brothers and sisters, they don't they have a half a gospel. They don't have the complete whole gospel or the truth of Jesus Christ. We need the truth. We need the whole gospel, the round, complete gospel of Jesus. I mean, God is not only grace, mercy, and love and charity and faith and peace, but God is also a God of justice, judgment, equity. He's a God in which uh, has wrath too. He has two sides, as I've mentioned in my videos. Look at the balance of God. A perfect just way and a perfect just measure is God. So again, James here tells us, faith wrought his works for Abraham, and his faith was made perfect. That's James 2.22. Abraham first, and remember, brothers and sisters, so let's not, you know, contradict these things or take things out of context and, you know, misinterpret the con uh, context, because here we can see of the works of the law, for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Romans 4, 2, 3. So Abraham, if he was like, look, I offered my son Isaac at the altar for God. Yeah, he can uh, glory himself and glory before others, but not before God. Because no glory shall, or no flesh shall glory before God. So Abraham was not accounted for righteousness when he was of the uncircumcision, as I've mentioned in many videos. He was accounted for righteousness or was imputed for him unto righteousness because he first believed God. So therefore, him having faith in God made him a blessing to many nations. To bless, and, and God says, you know, blessings I will bless thee and multiply and I will surely multiply thee. 
and those in which will be hairs uh, of, of the seed or hairs of the promise with Abraham, faithful Abraham, the Gentiles too. So Abraham believed God and it was imputed for him for righteousness and therefore he was called a friend of God. And we can see that in James 2.23. So let's look at things in context. He was not saved because he had presented Isaac at the altar. He was saved because he first had faith. His faith prompted him to do something because he believed on God. It was accounted him for righteousness because he had faith in God. And therefore, that's why he wanted to present Isaac. And he was willing to sacrifice his only son knowing that God could even resurrect his dead son. So it was his faith that was so strong and so uh, uh, so strong and so pleasing to the Lord that God had blessed him. All right, brothers and sisters, and that Christ would come from the promise of the seed of this one, Abraham. So please let's look at everything in context before those say that, yeah, but Abraham, all he did was believe. Yes, this is true. He believed, and that was imputed for him for righteousness. So first he believed, and then he presents Isaac at the altar. So again, faith plus works. You see that? So it's not only faith or works. I want to get down to the matters right here to the church. It's faith plus works. You see many people talking about the once saved, always saved heresies, and I have to agree with those people who, you know, believe that that's a lie, because it is a lie. I don't believe in once saved, always saved. But instead of, you know, like looking at uh, those matters, because there's many, uh, teachings on that let's talk about faith plus works they go together just like a gas and car goes together just like your heart and the brain are in one temple they go together you know like you know when jesus was on this earth he was doing miracles he was doing works by his father so he told me write this down for those in which say your works based salvation and they are casting your name you know as evil and those in which are saying all these uh slanderously reporting you tell them this I did works here on earth by my father. Did that mean I was doing works? Of course I was, he says. You know, because faith without works is dead. Being alone. So, would you say that Jesus was doing works? Oh, sure he was, because the father was in him. I mean, it's like going to work and not using your hands. I mean, can you imagine these ideal, slothful people? These people remind me of lazy servants. Like, they don't like to work for the kingdom. And, you know, we're not saved by our works. I just want to make mention of that. You're not saved by your works. You're saved by God, by Jesus, God giving us Jesus. It is the gift of God unto salvation, brothers and sisters. It's because he loved us first. He chose us first. You know, it is not less of our works of the law or the things in which you have done. Jesus didn't save me because of the things I've done. Jesus didn't save Apostle Paul because he was a saint or he was a person which loved Jesus' people. He, as a matter of fact, wasted the church and executed the church and, 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 and the people of God. But God had mercy because it is not willingly us who run who runneth. It is because of him. He in which predestines or elects those in which he calls. So it's God's will. It's after the pleasure of his will. After the counsel of his good pleasure. Not because of us or anything we've done. It doesn't matter whether you've known him or not. It doesn't matter whether you've served him your whole life or not. It, it, he's going to call and choose whoever pleases him. Alright? Whoever he has appointed. It's because it, it's after, the good, after his good pleasure. Do you understand, brothers and sisters? That there's no amount of praying or fasting for you to, to be a favorite. God chooses whoever he wants. Whoever pleases him. Moses didn't think he could speak. He chose Moses. Uh, Paul the Apostle, the worst chief of sinners, a Pharisee of Pharisees, God chose him. You understand, brothers and sisters? You know, look at Peter. He goes and denies Jesus thrice. He was an apostle and a disciple of Jesus. It's whoever makes God happy. It's the king's counsel. He will choose whoever he wants. And that's what makes him God. All right, brothers and sisters? He's not going to be like, oh, this woman or this man fasted 40 days. They're going to be more honored than this person who didn't know me. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. I kept hearing in my spirit. All right, brothers and sisters? So again, faith brought his works, and faith, see? Faith moved him to do something like present Isaac in the alt on, on, on the altar. And faith, therefore, was made perfect. So again, faith and works. Just like God is grace and wrath. Just like God is, you know, justice and judgment. And he's mercy. And mercy rejoices, uh, um, 
um, against judgment. So Abraham believed God first. So let's get that straight before people, you know, us uh, lie uh, against God's people. You need to listen to the message, brothers and sisters, and listen to the context that you may know how to rightly and sharply divide the word of God, brothers and sisters. All right, so he was imputed for righteousness, and he was a friend of God, according to James 2.23. So here James says in 2.17, faith without works is dead alone. Those people who say, I just believe, I don't need to do anything because if I go and help anybody, if I go and do anything, I'm adding to salvation or I'm, uh, uh, this is uh, works. And we're not saved by works. These people are lazy and they are in danger of, you know, uh, of judgment because they are going to be the tree and which has no fruit and therefore God is to cut that off. You know, that tree is going to be cut off from the root, brothers and sisters, from the lump to the seed to the branch to everything. It's going to be cut off, all right, because they're unprofitable servants. Just like the body without the spirit, right, is dead, so faith without works is dead also, right? And that's what it says in James 2.26. Sometimes I wonder how do these people even have jobs? How do you have a job? What do you do in your job? You just sit around, you're, you don't do nothing when it requires you to do something, right? Are you those people in which are the marketplaces, those children in the marketplaces, sitting ideal with your time, not doing nothing, not working, huh? And then you cast these people in which are working for the kingdom, laboring hard for the kingdom. You, you know, you say that we're not doing nothing. I mean, brothers and sisters, it's time to examine and, and observe and reevaluate your lives. What are you doing for the kingdom of heaven? Are you working? Uh, I mean, I lose a lot of sleep. There's times, you know, I study very hard. And I don't want to be those people, in which those women in which are ever learning, but they're never able to uh, come to the truth. I don't want to be those people in which has a knowledge of God, but I don't know the love of God. I want to know both sides. I want to know about God. I want to know God. And I want to know his love. I want to know what angers him. I want to know that's why I chose the fear of the Lord. I want to desire his fear, his knowledge. I want to understand what makes him happy, what disappoints him, what is, you know, his, his good pleasure, what, is, what pleases the Lord. And that's what we ought to have, a heart for the Lord. All right, brothers and sisters? People often say, all you have to do is believe. They quote this, pic, uh, this scripture in John 6, 29. Let me see if I can find it here. In John 6, 29, they say, all you have to do is believe. And they say right here, which is true. So now if it is God's will that you believe, brothers and sisters, on his son, but the word believe, pistil, is a Greek word. This word occurs in the Thayer's Greek lexicon uh, 248 times in 220 verses. All right? So you can continue in those things that in which you have learned. So again, Jesus says, continue in my word. This is how I know uh, ones love me. They in which claim they love me if they keep my words, if they keep my commands, if they abide in my words and do those things in which I say. That's how I know that they love me. And then I and my Father will abode in them and make our home in them. So he says right here that you would obey the gospel if you believed. If you believed, you would obey the gospel. You would believe in my word. You would allow my word to abide in you and uh, continually. So those in, which, uh, the, uh, those in which say, I love Jesus. Jesus says, you know, they... Confess me with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me, teaching the commandments of men and the traditions of men. How do they love me? They don't even keep my words. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? So, again, a lot of people who say, you know, it was finished at the cross, that you're adding works to it. So then you might be telling James that you're adding works. You might want to tell James, who is Jesus Christ's half-brother, who was a servant of God, you're adding works. Because I would love to see, you know, what, what they would say. Jesus says, you know, you will see, uh, then shall the children come from the east, the west, and all sides, uh, and they shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the prophets, and not they themselves thrust out. So Jesus also has a lot against those in which have a, a false balance of God. He says, a just way is God's delight, but a false balance is an abomination unto God. So you need a just way, a just balance of God.
Because one side of God is a false balance. It's an abomination like divers weights and divers measures. So they will, uh, like I said, often quote uh, this. Uh, what is it? Um, let me see. Uh, John 6, 29, brothers and sisters. All right. They will say that all you have to do is uh, believe and that if you add anything onto it, uh, you are adding on to uh, the, the, the cross, the finished works of the cross. And this is complete lies, brothers and sisters. So, again, people um, also believe, that, like I said, there's one God, so do the devils. They do well. And again, James says, what is a prophet? My brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? So, yeah, a man may say thou hast faith. So somebody might say unto you, you know, hey, I, you know, you have, uh, I have faith, but you have works, right? But look what James 2, 18 says. Yeah, a man may say thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. So here says James to them, show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. I mean, those two are powerful, just like prayer and fasting are. So think of it like that. Prayer plus fasting. Powerful weapons, you know, and the spirit, spiritual warfare, faith and works. Very powerful together, right? So three cord is very strong. It's very hard to break. When there's two or three gathered in the name of Jesus, he says, there he is in the midst of us. So praise the Lord Jesus that he gave me this message. So again, works now. Let's go to works. Jesus says here, he, he says, will render according to every man, according to his deeds. In Romans 2, 6, God told me, I will give according. I have my reward with me. My reward is with me. Hold on to your crown. Lay your crown on like God. Don't allow no man to take your crown because my reward is with me to render according to every man's works. All works in which are done in darkness shall be manifest and made into light. Those in which reprove dark works are people uh, and children of light. So, again, he will render according to everyone's deeds. The false prophets or prophetesses who thought they were prophets or prophetesses of God, yes, all works will be brought before God. Everything. He's going to show and reveal many hearts. Many of the people who had a false Jesus, their Jesus was John Calvin, Charles Spurgeon, their Jesus was Jonathan, uh, um, uh, Jonathan whatever, Edwards, uh, Andrew Murray, their God was uh, uh, a God in which is not the God of the Holy Bible, their God was Luther, and or Puritan God, a Puritan God, which is not the God of the Scriptures, uh, but brothers and sisters. They had, you know, like the, the, a lot of these people had another God. A lot of them had a, another Jesus, like a Joseph Smith Jesus, or like a um, Charles T. Russell, or all these uh, Ellen G. White, these heretics. And Jesus is going to surely expose all those in which thought they knew him. All their hearts are going to be exposed before him. They spend all day, you know, learning about him, and they're never able to come to the truth or the knowledge of the truth about Jesus. You know, brothers and sisters, that's very tragic. Abraham justified by work. So again, yes, he was justified. But it says if he were justified here, you might think that's a contradiction. Here it says in Romans 4, 2, 3, if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof uh, uh, to glory, but not before God. So again, and it says here uh, in um, James 2, 21, Abraham justified by works when he offered up Isaac at the altar. That's not to contradict or confuse you, brothers and sisters. It's saying if he thought his works you know, where, you know, what saved him, then, you know, he has no, nothing to glory before God because no flesh shall glory before God. But therefore, because it was imparted unto him for his righteousness, it was God who imputed his righteousness as David spoke of this blessedness of, you know, right here where David described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. And then it's talking about the works of the law, like the law of Moses or the Torah. Then he said that man right here, and that was also um, um, imputed onto the circumcision and the uncircumcision, meaning the Jew and the Gentile were able to be 
partakers of the same grace because all uh, fall short of the glory of God. They're, everybody's guilty before God to the Jew and to the Gentile. So I want you guys to understand that this also was imparted to the Jew and Gentile. Not only to the Gentile, but also to the Jew. So that's what David was talking about, imputing this righteousness, justification, justification by grace through faith. Justified by Jesus, but not justified that you continue in your sin. Not, you know, justified that you trample in the blood of Jesus. So we're going to get there too. Because there's some also, some heresies that say, oh, I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. It is Jesus' works on me, an unrighteous sinner, and I can just continue my sin. No, you're a heretic. You are delusional. You cannot stain your sin after the blood of Jesus has purchased you with that redemptive, the redemption blood of Jesus Christ, the power that he has purchased you as a possession. He means that you turn from your sins, because therefore then you would be trampling on the blood of Jesus. And we're going to get there too. So he says right here, Abraham was justified because his faith wrought works and his faith was made therefore perfect. These are the scriptures before your eyes. And this is not from my opinion, not my judgments, not my testimonies, right? Not my, it's, it's the testimony of God, the witness of God, which is far greater than man. It's the Holy Ghost who teaches me these things, and I give God the glory, and I take none, because he's the one who gives me all these revelations, and I give him the glory, the honor, and the praise, and the worship for accounting me uh, uh, worthy and faithful of this ministry, brothers and sisters, according to his grace that he's bestowed upon me, that I may teach you guys that, you know, you need to defer differentiate, you need to discern that you, bo you need both sides of God. You need to do both things for God to please God, because again, it's like going to work and you don't make, you know, you 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 go to work and you say I'm not going to work, but you make money. You're, you know, that's a, you're a cheater. It's like you know, you're just sitting around with your time on your phone. You're not doing nothing. You're not helping people. You're not contributing to society, your neighborhood. You're not helping nobody, and you expect to get paid. Can you tell me that's not a slothful servant? Who, will, who hides his talent under the earth? Can you not tell me that's a slothful servant? So by works a man is justified. And not by faith only, because we know that faith only, it says, is dead. To have only faith without works, faith alone is dead without works. Rahab right here, the harlot, she was justified by works. Why was she justified by works? Because she had faith first, and then by her faith she was justified what she did. And what she did is what she received the messengers of God, and she had sent them another way. James 2.25. Do you understand, brothers and sisters? Jesus did works here on earth by the Father. And I want to get there. We see that in John 5.36, John 10.25, John 3, I'm sorry, 10.32, John 10.38, John 14, 10, John 14, 11, and John 14, 12. And I spent so many hours, over like five or six hours, maybe more, brothers and sisters, to get the truth out to you. All right, brothers and sisters, because I'm tired of seeing people who are deceived and living uh, a, a defeated life and, and listening to these false ministers of Satan or these uh, people which transform themselves as, as, as messengers of God or messengers of righteousness and they're leading many people to hell because they don't have a, a clue, they don't know how to, to you know, discern the scriptures or they're probably not even opening up their Bibles to see these things. Alright, brothers and sisters? John 5.36, let's go here. But I have greater witness than a, that of John, says Jesus. And that greater witness is God, the God, the Father in which was in him. And that's why we have the witness of God in, in us, and which is far greater than man's witness. Which the Father, he says, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. So was Jesus doing works when he cast out devils, healed the sick, the blind, the lame, when he resurrected the dead from the, you know, the, those in which were in the graves? Was Jesus, you know, doing works when he healed those of the palsies, those of bleeding disorders, those in which had withered hands? Of course he was doing works because his father was in him. Can you imagine if he didn't do any miracles? Miracles are works. He says right here, John 10, 25. Jesus answered them when the Pharisees were charging him. 
right? So, like, how, how are you doing these things? From what, wheresoever, how do you do these things? They were asking him. And he's like, you know, if you didn't believe in the testimony of John, you know, then therefore, you know, I'm not going to tell you how I do these things, right? Was the things that which John were doing, were they from man or from our Father, which are in heaven? They didn't want to answer him because they knew that if they said one thing, he would say, then why didn't you believe John when he was doing those works? But then, therefore, they kept silence, brothers and sisters, and that's why uh, Jesus told them, therefore, I'm not going to tell you how I do these things, all right? Because they would come often tempting him. So he said, Jesus answered them, I told you, you believe me, you believe not the works that I do in my Father's name. They have been witnessed, they, uh, I'm sorry, they bear witness of me. So you see that? He's like, you don't believe the works that I do. The works right here, he says, the works. He says right here, that I do in my Father's name. They bear witness of me. There's John 10, 25. John 10, 32. He says right here, Jesus answered them, many good works. Many good works. Oh, but Jesus was doing works. Are you one of those Pharisees accusing the real Christians of doing works, uh, calling us uh, uh, those in which have added to salvation? I mean, come on, brothers and sisters. Come on, open up your eyes and see what Jesus is telling you. You know, don't listen to people who say all you have to do is believe. That if you do anything for the kingdom, you're adding to the cross, the finished work of the cross. They have no idea. They err in the scriptures. They are not taught by God. They're taught by man. And Jesus answered, Now many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? And that's when they said, We don't stone you for good works. That's when the Pharisees responded. They responded by, by making yourself equal to God, by blaspheming. So they thought that Jesus was blaspheming by making himself equal to God. And there's nothing wrong with him making himself equal to God because he is God in the flesh. To show you the invisible God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1.1. 1, 1. So we see here in John 10.38, If I do not the works of my Father, I don't care what Christians may say, brothers and sisters. They may cast my name and say, she teaches works-based salvation. They can say every slander, any lies against me. I will not, you know, uh... I will not compromise my faith in Jesus Christ. I will stand for the truth. I don't care what people think. I mean, they thought crazy things of Jesus, and I'm not surprised. I'm not going to act like I'm going to be better than my master. I'm just a servant, and I will be treated like him too. If you don't like the persecutions, you might think and reconsider you might be the third seed. The one that gets choked up by the thorns, or that one in which, I'm sorry, the second seed, that one in which falls in stony places. They, you know, because the persecutions come against them, they take offense. I don't care what persecutions come against me. I'm not going to take offense, because Jesus Christ didn't take offense. He came here, told them what, you know, the Father had told them. Those things in which he bore witness of were not his witnesses, it was the Father in him. And that's all I'm giving to you, the witness of God in, in me, the Holy Spirit. Because in the end of life, you're not going to give me an account. You're going to give God an account. All right? So here he says in John 10.32, or I'm sorry, um, where was I? John 10.32. So Jesus answered, many good works have I shoot from, um, oh yeah, we went through that. So now let's go to John 10.37 to 38. If I do not the works, Jesus says, of my Father, believe me not. So he's like, if I don't do those works of my Father, don't believe me. But if I do, though, you believe not me, believe, at least he says, if you don't even believe in me, at least believe in the works that I do. He says right here, that ye may know and believe that I, that I'm sorry, that the Father is in me and I in him. Let's go here and see. Uh, John uh, 14, 10, uh, 12. John 14, 10, 12. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. See that? So are you saying that God was doing works when he uh, rested on the seventh day when he created everything and uh, all that was good and he took a day off uh, to rest on the Sabbath day. Uh, is that saying that God was doing works? He rested from his works. Works. 
Oh, so you're telling me that when God punishes the evil deeds of the ungodly sinners, I mean, there's also fruit in which, you know, either we have our fruit onto holiness, onto our righteousness, or we have our fruit in the flesh onto death. So what fruit are you bearing, good fruit or bad fruit? You're going to be judged for your fruit, your labor, your work. So he, 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 here he says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. So again, we have another thing where Jesus says, at least believe the Father in me who is doing these works in me. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he also do. So Jesus told us if we believe on him with a small mustard seed, small seed of a mustard, or I'm sorry, a seed of a mustard seed faith. We can say unto the mountain, Be thou, be removed, be cast into the sea, and it shall be done unto us. And if we have that little tiny faith, we can move mountains. We can, uh, you know, the tree in which is in front of you, you can, you know, curse the tree that doesn't bear fruit like he did with a fig tree. And say, let no fruit grow on to here, uh, here, uh, hither no more. And it, and it withered, and his disciples were astonished. Like, how do you do that? But Jesus told us we can do greater works if we believe. And here people are saying, huh. You're doing works. Oh, really? He says, And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. So, again, speaking of works and elms, I want to also cover that woman right here. Um, where is she uh, located? Uh, she's somewhere here. Hold on, that woman right here. The woman that was full of good works and elms deeds. And you can find that in the book. Please write these scriptures down if you want to know where can they, you can find them. Please be a, a, a student. Study to show yourself approved to God. All right? Even if it's one person or two people watching, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? Because one soul matters to God. One sinner that cometh to repentance, all the angels in heaven rejoice. Because that, that's how precious one soul is to God. That he died for you and me. He says, woman, this woman right here was full of good works. Oh, wait. Oh, you're adding on to salvation. You're adding on to the finished work of the cross. And alms deeds. Acts 9.36. In Acts 26.20, he says, works, bring forth, therefore, works meet for repentance. Just as John said, bring, therefore, fruit meet for repentance. So, brothers and sisters... Please, these churches in which are out there, lukewarm churches, accusing us, calling us works-based, they're in danger. They're in danger. You understand? Unless they repent, they will perish. I want to go back to 1 Timothy. Let's cover this. So Jesus also made mention of that woman, that widow in which lodged strangers, as I mentioned yesterday, washed the feet of strangers. She had raised nieces or her own children. She also uh, diligently saw good works. The widow, the older widow, the one in which is taking a three score, uh, old, the seven year old uh, widows, brothers and sisters, or those in which are older widows, they in which have uh, labored and diligently have done a good work. You understand, brothers and sisters? Those are people we often keep in remembrance. Those in which labor for the saints day and night, remembering their bonds often. So you see right here, the widow, she also had done good works. And 1 Timothy diligently sought after good works. And 5.10, the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 2.10, women who profess godliness, those in which, you know, we made mention of yesterday, not costly array or you know, broided hair or whatever, those ones in which have professed godliness with good works. With good works. Gentle, quiet, meek spirit with good works. Brothers and sisters. So let's go through 1 Timothy 2.10, as I mentioned, but which becometh professing godliness with good works. We just finished that. We went through that. So therefore, it is biblical to have good works. 1 Timothy 5.10 the widow, in which was well reported of works, if she had brought up the children, she lodged strangers, if she washed the feet of saints, she had relieved the afflicted, she dil diligently sought a good work. So we just went through the widow in 1 Timothy 5.10, and you can see that there's nothing in which contradicts 
works in the Bible. For, uh, 1 Timothy 5.25 Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. So those which are openly sinning, those works, they're going to be manifest. Whatever a man uh, he does in darkness, all those works are going to be brought and manifest into light. Every hidden thing. Remember that you know, the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments, for God will bring every secret thing that is done in darkness. Anything that you think that nobody knows will be revealed and manifest into light. He will see every good and evil thing you have done in your heart. Anything that is in your heart that you don't think anyone knows, he knows. All right, brothers and sisters? So again, also we see some men's uh, good works were beforehand, others seen them. 1 Timothy 6.18, Paul speaks to those in which are rich in the world. Talking about those rich men in which James even mentions that they will howl for their miseries, for their uh, garments are can canker, uh, uh, um, they're, they're like worn out. Their garments are all rusted and dirty. Their, their labor and their, those things are going to eat their flesh like, uh, like a consuming fire. Those things in which they delighted here on earth. That their miseries are going to come upon those people, those rich men who have not done nothing for the Lord or labor. They live their lives as if it was, you know, that they were going to live forever, like they were going to name streets after themselves. No, brothers and sisters. Uh, Jesus says, How will you rich men for the miseries that shall come upon you? Paul speaks to those in which are rich in the world that they be not high-minded, because God says, you know, uh, rejoice for the low man in which is going to be exalted. The low man of low degree, your brother, your brethren of low degree shall be exalted. But these rich, rich men, he says, don't be high-minded. He says, but they that do good, that, that, but that they do good. So you see that? That they do good. Look at what Paul says here. That they do good and that they be rich in good works. So yes, instead of being rich in, your, in, in money, be rich in good works, ready to demonstrate willingly to communicate. 1 uh, Timothy 6, 18. 2 Timothy 3, 17 says... All scripture is given by inspiration of God, so we know that the scripture is breathed by God, given by inspiration of God. It is not some just some man who came up with these things. It's not some Nostradamus who came up with some witchcraft prophecies. All right, brothers and sisters, this is God using holy men of God filled with the Holy Ghost. So you need the spirit of discernment to know who is a real one from God and who isn't. That's why discernment is so, so important to have in the body of Christ. I have the spirit of discernment. Praise the Lord. I can tell you right away who's from God and who isn't. But I'm not here to sow discord. All right? I hope that you would get the gift of uh, discernment to discern those things. And which are from Christ and which are not. I hope you would uh, not be soft or lazy with your salvation. And start taking it serious. Because it's your soul after all. He says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. For correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, yeah, may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Soundness, a man in which is furnished unto all good works, a man in which has the complete doctrine of Jesus Christ, who is able to rightly divide the word of God. So we see that also it does not contradict faith plus works. All right, brothers and sisters, as some men have uh, mistaken or have misinterpreted, uh, whether they were ignorant of this thing or whether they are doing the, these things and they're reprobate, knowing the truth, they don't care. Titus uh, tells us right here, Titus 2.7, In all things, shewing thyself a pattern of good works. He says right here, In doctrine, showing, shewing uncorruptness, gravity, soundness, and sincerity. So therefore, even Titus, or Paul says it here in the letter to Titus, in all patterns, in a, uh, showing yourself a pattern of good works. Right here. Titus 2.14, Paul says, And let ours also learn to maintain good works for necessary uses, that they may be not unfruitful. So wait a minute. Paul's saying that you need to learn uh, to maintain good works unless you would be unfruitful? Oh yeah, that does sound like Jesus. He does say every tree that does not bear good fruit will be withered and cast and tossed into the fire. Oh yeah, because all you have to do is believe and just do nothing for the kingdom. You don't have to labor for the work that he's given you or the ministry that he's given you or whatever, he's, whatever gift he's given you. That little one gift you couldn't even use. Come on. Don't hide your talent. 
under the earth. So Titus 2.14 tells us that they be not unfruitful. Yeah, we ought to be bearing fruit as Christians. All right, brothers and sisters. Titus 3.8, this is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. And I'm sorry, guys, that this message is going to be a little long. Because when you go to class or if you go to college, you sit in your classrooms for an hour and a half or two hours, even like three. I used to sit for three and a half, four hours in anatomy and uh, physiology, brothers or, uh, yeah, brothers and sisters. So uh, I want you guys to just learn and grow. This is God's word. This is spiritual food. This is life. This is to quicken your soul, brothers and sisters. Those in which hear us, may we save ourselves and those in which hear us. All right, my brothers and sisters. So he says here that they be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. So yeah, he wants you to believe um, those in which have believed in God to maintain uh, good works. In Titus 3.8. Also we see here in Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity. He tells us right here, and purify unto himself a peculiar people. He says right here, people zealous of good works. So God has redeemed a peculiar people, people who are zealous of good works. Here we see that uh, recorded in... Um, uh, Titus 2.14, brothers and sisters. So you ought to be that kind of peculiar, special people who he has called out of darkness and brought into his marvelous light. That, you know, that we sh should shoot forth his marvelous light, his praise, that all men in darkness may see the, the light in us, our good works, that they may glorify our Heavenly Father. So to those who call you works-based salvation preacher, teacher, whatever, whatever they accuse you of, he says, because remember, we have one accuser, and, you know, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. All right, brothers and sisters, Titus 1.16, they profess that they know God. These are people who profess Jesus told me. They profess they know me, he says. He says, but in works they deny me. He says, see that? In works, they give me mouth service. They say I believe, but in works they deny me, being reprobate. He says right here, disobedient, abominable, he says, unto every good work reprobate. That is a message to take heed to. Titus 1.16, professing Christianity, Christianity. Those who just say all you got to do is have faith. You don't need works. Yeah? Well, Jesus says they profess they know God, but in works they deny him. They're abominable. They are uh, disobedient and reprobate uh, uh, unto every good work. Reprobate. So again, brothers and sisters, Titus, um, we went through 116. Let's go through uh, uh, the book of James, chapter 2, 14 through 20. Please follow me with your Bibles. Be a student. Start to learn. Start to highlight all things. Take notes, brothers and sisters. Every teaching, it's like to edify you guys. You know, I get nothing out of this. I don't profit off of God. I don't make money off of God. I love God. I do it for free. All right, brothers and sisters? Look at Paul. He robbed other churches, you know, just to help others, brothers and sisters. So I want you guys to understand. I don't need a dollar. I trust in the Lord. He's always provided for me. All right? I care about your souls. And that's the, this, is, this whole channel is because I've given my heart to fear God. And all his servants and prophets and, and messengers and whatever they were, they feared God. I'm a servant of God. I fear God. I'm scared of him. I went through a very dreadful experience. I thought I was going to go to hell, brothers and sisters. My whole life has been changed. I wish I could have people in the past to testify that these things are true, that they may tell you how I used to be, brothers and sisters. I was the chief of sinners. I think I was even worse than Paul, brothers and sisters. So again, when you, when you think of it, I've done it all. Everything you could think of. So please know that I love you. I'm not telling you what tickles your ears. It says in the last days men should give to um, false doctrine, seducing spirits, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, keeping to, you know, teachers that get itching ears. They want to go to teachers who itch their ears. Come on, my friends. Hell is not fun. 
Have you guys ever sat in a, I live in the desert, have you guys ever sat in a, a 100 degree or 110 degree weather or even more somewhere in California and, and death row and other places? It's so hot. Can you even tell me you want, you would like to go to hell and sit in that furnace for eternity? Come on brothers and sisters, where, where the worm doesn't even die, you're separated from God. Take your salvation serious. Take your soul serious. Don't be carnal. James 2.14, I want to cover this, faith um, uh, uh, concerning uh, faith and works by James, who is the Lord's half-brother, because remember, remember, Jesus was conceived of the Holy Spirit. They had the same mother, and uh, James' father was Joseph and Mary, but Jesus' father was not Joseph. Jesus' father was God the Father, all right? He is like a, a, a God in, in, in human flesh. He was God, imagine. He was not even conceived of a human father. <laughs> That's how you know he's God. A woman, to show you that he, you know, to, made under the law that he made humans, he created us, and then he also comes from heaven. Come on, guys. I mean, this, this should come by no surprise. All right? The creator came down here in the flesh. All right? Conceived by God. He is God. All right, my friends? No Muhammad or Buddha or Shiva or Allah. Nobody came that way. Half, you know, it, uh, under, a woman made under the law, a human being, and God the Father being his Father from heaven. I mean, come on. So we also could, you know, if we bear the uh, earthly image of Adam, right, the earthly Adam, the, if we bear that image, we also should bear the image of the heavenly, because Christ is in us. It says in 2 Corinthians. So let's go to James 2, 14, 20. Please follow uh, um, along with this uh, chapter, brothers and sisters. And I didn't have, like, I don't have a printer. And I told my husband he wanted to give me a printer. I said, it's all right, you know, maybe next time. But I wrote all these things with my hands to show you guys how, like, loyal I am and faithful to Christ that I want you guys to know the truth. I don't want you guys to be tossed to and fro with all the different winds of doctrines. Stay rooted. Be rooted in Christ. Be faithful. Be obedient to Jesus Christ. All right? He loves a person or a faithful servant who's watching for him. A faithful, wise servant, brothers and sisters. All right? Don't just believe everything you hear and see. I don't even believe every single dream of mine. I always test everything to tell God, I know the heart is deceitful and wicked. I trust in you, Lord. I need you to reveal this is from you, brothers and sisters, because sometimes a heart can deceive a man. Actually, most of the time. So James 2, 14, 20. So those in which say you're adding to salvation, yeah, how so? I'm here to reprove you by the word of God. Let every man be a liar, but God be true. James 2, 14, 20. As I've mentioned, what doth it profit my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked, you have a brother or sister, be naked, and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace. How many times have I went through this with you guys? If you're new to this channel, welcome to my channel. God bless you. Peace be on to you. Please, brothers and sisters, says, Be ye warmed and be filled. You tell this brother or sister who is a Christian in need of you. All right? Notwithstanding, you give them to those things in which are needful, to the body. What doth it profit? He says, Even so, faith, if it hath now works, it is dead alone. He says right here, yeah, a man may say, though has faith, and I have works. So we just covered that right here. In James uh, 2.18, he says right here, Shew me thy faith without thy works, and I'll shew thee my faith by my works. And I want to tell you that Jesus is so serious about this. All right, brothers and sisters, Jesus is not playing when it comes to this, because he said, Amanda, write this down. Write it down until they understand it. I don't care how many times it has to go out there. Until you understand Brothers and sisters, I have the seal of the Holy Spirit. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters. I know what God is saying. I know that these things are true because He is inside of me. He bears witness as if I was with Him from the beginning, brothers and sisters. Jesus says here in Matthew 25, 35, Many of the righteous will say unto me, and this is parallel to those in which are destitute of uh, you know, daily food or clothes, Jesus says right here, tell them this. Many of the righteous will say, for I was hungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick 
and you visited me. I was in prison and you came on to me. Then shall the righteous say. So these are the righteous. Look what the righteous are saying to Jesus. They will answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall they say unto him, then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed. Jesus says, Many of you are going to hear these words. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Unless ye repent, he says, ye all likewise shall perish. For I was in hunger, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in, naked, and you clothed me not. Christians, it's time to stop thinking about yourselves. Jesus had to strip me here uh, off of everything, all my vanity, six years ago, and threw me into a shelter, homeless, naked, destitute, desolate. And I had to learn the hard way. And seeing these things, they happen onto me, and I had to learn. Don't be like me. Learn now. Learn from my mistakes. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee in hunger, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee, then shall they answer him. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, and as much as you did it not to the one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Do you guys see? For those who say, I don't need to help those your brothers or sisters and what you're in need. Because he says right here, what does it profit you? When you tell, you know, you tell somebody, your brother or sister, who is a destitute of food or clothing, oh, be in peace, be warmed and filled. So if there's truly brothers or sisters that are in desperate need, they really need your help. I understand. All right, brothers and sisters. But if they're like just, you know, using God to profit or gain off of him when they have everything from God, I mean, this is, you know, God is going to judge according to every man or man's works. But there are some people who really need your help. There's people who are homeless and don't even have anything. And they are Christians. Why? That's like, imagine Jesus being in them. Go and help them, brothers and sisters. Go help the poor. Go give to them. Stop being selfish with your money. Because you have one life. And that's going to perish in the end. Help people, brothers and sisters. Stop giving to the rich. Stop giving to men who have houses, who have cars, who have jobs, who have all these things. To help the people who have nothing. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus made may, may mention, he's, this is very important. Again, Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will love my words. My words will abide in you. If you love me, my Father will love you too. He says here in 1 John 3, 18, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. So this is deed right here, deed and truth. Believing on God, loving God, and doing the things He tells you to do. Because you don't want to be that person in which hears the word and you're not a doer of the word. You're deceiving yourself. You're the foolish man in which built his house upon sand. You want to be the wise man who built his house upon a rock. And when you do your elms, you don't do them before men that they could see and see how holy you are. Jesus said, do it in secret where your heavenly father can see you and reward you. So don't go out there telling everybody what you're doing. But, but listen to this. Paul said, these people want to boast. I can boast more. All right. He said, because... Let me tell you, if you're boasting in the cross of Jesus Christ, not glorying in no, no other but the cross of Jesus, and the infirmities and what you went through for Jesus Christ, that's fine. 
But if you're boasting in yourself or other matters of men's affairs, that's evil. Every boasting is evil except for the cross or in your infirmities for the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, brothers and sisters, here, faith without works is dead alone. James 2.17 And again, Abraham uh, was justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar. Faith wrought his works and by works... Uh, I'm sorry, by works was faith made perfect. So we see that right here. So how was then the righteousness of God imputed unto Abraham, of the, the one in which was of the uncircumcision, as it was accounted unto him for circumcision, the seal of righteousness of God? Again, by God imputing righteousness without works. So therefore, because he believed God, and therefore that's when he offered Isaac. All right, brothers and sisters, so then... Uh, David again spoke of this blessedness. Let's go hear what David says. And I mentioned it right here. David uh, spoke of this uh, uh, blessedness. So brothers and sisters, uh, I think that's, where is it? Hold on. It is right here. David, um, I had recorded it somewhere. We'll get there, brothers and sisters. So again, what, was, what works was he speaking of? The works of the law. When David said, God imputeth righteousness without works. What is he talking about? Is he talking about abiding and bearing fruit for the vine? Or I'm sorry, bearing fruit, abiding in the vine? No. He's saying the works of the law. He's talking about the works right here of Moses, the Torah, the law. Those in which think, oh, I don't need Jesus. I, don't, I have Elohim. You know, the, the Jews under the, the works of the law, the, the, the old covenant law, the tabernacle of Moses. We've discuss, discussed that. We've covered these things, brothers and sisters. It is so grievous and burdensome to keep repeating these things. But I needed to get this out to you because I keep seeing people saying that you're adding on to salvation by works. And I'm like, what are they talking about? I'm going to get this once and for all. I'm going to get the truth out. And it's up to you to do whatever you do with the truth, brothers and sisters. And I'm sorry sometimes I get very zealous. It's because I love you guys. I love your soul. If I love Jesus, I've, uh, obviously I love God. I love your soul. So why would I want to see any of you guys castaways or rejects or lost in, 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 the, in that place, the abyss, the darkness, the, the lake of fire, hell, death. I don't want to see you guys there. So again, the flesh. David was talking about the, without the works of the flesh. Like those in which say, I've kept the Sabbath off. I keep the Sabbath. I don't eat foods in which are unclean, in which God has made all things clean. So we can't call anything he, in which he made clean, unclean. Um, that's recorded in the book of Acts. If he, if he says, you know, I, I do these things, I keep these days, certain days, feast days, certain moon days, whatever days they think, you know, are uh, holy. You know, this is what uh, David was talking about without the works. Like, you... We're called, like Apostle Paul, the Pharisee of Pharisee, was called even though he executed the church of Jesus Christ. All right? It was not his works that was imputed for him for righteousness. It was because God loved him. God chose him first. You guys understand the context. It's not talking about bearing fruit as you become a Christian. By your faith in Christ, who prompts you to move to do something for him. So right here, we see the dead works. The dead works that often David was saying here, Blessed is the man whom the Lord imputeth his righteousness. Uh, his righteousness for our unrighteousness does not mean like a habitual sin. You can continue in your uh, fornications or your sins. All right, brothers and sisters? Again, so I want to go through what is the dead works. So again, James tells us that pure religion and undefiled before God so if anyone considers himself religious, or religious, right? Some people in Islam or Catholicism. Certain people are following false denominations like uh, Judaism, right? Again, so Jesus is a fulfillment of the Torah, right? And the law and the prophets, all right? He's just the new covenant, the new bloodshed. You don't need the goats or the bullocks or the ashes of a heifer. You have the blood of Jesus Christ. So again, brothers and sisters, but they don't understand these things because they're yet so carnal, like the Pharisees. All right, brothers and sisters, they can't perceive the truth or the, the works in which were done before them. They didn't. They were hardened in their hearts. They were stiff-necked, uncircumcised in their hearts and their spirit. So God wants us to be of the circumcision, circumcised in our heart and our spirit. So I want you guys to understand. When David was speaking about the works without the works, he was talking about the dead works of the Jews. 
the ones that are, uh, who are under the law of Moses, the ones in which are under the Torah, right, works, or the Catholics also, too. This is going to apply to the Catholics, too. Those in which think they're doing good works, like, oh, I go and help the poor, which is not bad. You're supposed to be doing these things if you're not following a false idol or praising Mary, because Mary is not the interceder. Mary is not the mediator. The mediator to God is Jesus Christ. Jesus is a jealous God. God is jealous for you. He doesn't want you to bow to statues or rocks or wooden uh, images, because even notice in the book of Revelation that these people which uh, had committed all these idols with their hands, sacrilegious, whatever they did, whatever stoned, carved images they did with their hands, brothers and sisters, that Jesus even says he's gonna, they didn't even repent of their works, their evil deeds, their idolatries. All right? That's sad. So, again, Jesus Christ doesn't want you to bow to anything before God, worshiping God in spirit and truth. Those ones, the Jews who are keeping also going to the, because they don't have a temple, right? That they could go and present all these bullocks and goats and sh shed all this bloodshed. But they go to the Wailing Wall, all right? They go to the Wailing Wall, known as the Western Wall in Jerusalem. This is all vanity. When Jesus says, you don't need to go to a well or a wall or anywhere. You have to worship me in here. This temple, I abide in you if, I, if you have my spirit. If the Holy Spirit abides in you, we are the temple of God. But the Jews or other people cannot perceive these things. They go to temples thinking they're going to find God there, brothers and sisters. All right? When God <laughs> abides in us, Jesus resurrected the body, not, the, not a church or a building, literally. All right, brothers and sisters? So again, you have Muslims who think by visiting the Mecca yearly or giving to the poor. Again, these things are good if they are in Christ. Because if you think that you don't need Jesus and that you're not in the Lord, you don't have faith because your, your faith accounts you for righteousness. Not the things that you do for God, but the things in which you believe first on God. That you declared first, because we can see that right here in Ephesians 2, 8, 10. For by grace are you saved. Through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So your works right here by keeping the, going to the Mecca yearly, going to uh, Catholics thinking that I have to do all these good works to see heaven, or the uh, Torah keepers thinking they're going to see Elohim God, who is Jesus, Yeshua, in his Jewish terms, Adonai. They think they're going to see God by keeping on to the old covenant in which waxeth, perisheth, and is uh, vanisheth away. When Jesus is the new covenant, these people right here think that we're going to see God by these works. These people right here, Jehovah Witnesses, and those in which are atheists, agnostics, they think that they're good people. They don't need to accept Christ. And who's the only one who can save them and justify them and make them clean, but they don't know that. Or they're, you know, blinded by the devil who's blinded them and that they're not able to see the truth because he's kept them captive at his own will. We have to pray for these people. And then also you have the Greek Orthodox, which, which is just like another branch of a Catholicism mixed with some, you know, Christian roots, but it's not from Jesus, right? And then you have Buddhists, right, who think just all you got to do is do good. And I'm telling you, these things are good, without, but without Jesus, it's all in vain. You are to help the people. You are to help the poor. So you got to see how Satan has got everybody divided, guys. Open up your eyes. All right, brothers and sisters. Then you have the science philanthropists who go out there helping communities, helping the poor, going and traveling, doing all these things that some Christians don't even do as they claim to know God by their mouths and profess Him with their mouths, but their hearts are far from Him. They don't even do anything that these people, which are unbelievers, are doing. They're probably doing more than a believer should be doing. And then also, those in which say, I'm a good person. I don't have to believe in God. God, you know, loves everybody. No, brothers and sisters, it is true that God died, gave his son up for us because he loved the world. But God, brothers and sisters, God will not be mocked. All right, so again, you also have here in Hebrews 6.1, I already went through the, let us go on to perfection, the doctrine of Christ. The principles and which are like elementary before we move on to perfection. So, and not laying again the foundation of repentance again from dead works. So, God purchased us our dead conscience and which was under the law to serve the true living God when Jesus has shed his precious blood to redeem us and forgive us for our sins through his blood. So, here you see right here the blood of Jesus Christ is the one in which purchased our conscience right here from dead works, known as all these works as I mentioned. Right? To serve the true living God. And you can see that in Hebrews 9.14. That no blood of bullocks or goats or calves or any kind of shed 
bloodshed is good enough besides the blood of Jesus Christ, the new covenant, because he was as a lamb without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And the blood of Jesus is the only one that can purchase us and cleanse us. But again, Jesus Christ also, notice that even Moses, when he had poured the blood in the hyssop, notice that he also used water too. So the water, the blood, the hyssop, he poured upon the people, sprinkled upon those vessels of the ministration or the vessels in which would be a part of the ministry, and also upon the lamb, uh, the book, uh, the book, uh, the book on which uh, Moses had, the tabernacles, brothers and sisters. Again, so we know that Jesus also too was crucified without the camp, just like those animals were presented at the altar and cruc or I'm sorry, and, and uh, they, they were sacrificed without the camp. So notice the depiction of the animal being a depiction of Jesus, the Lamb of God, right? Shedding his precious blood. They are also uh, taking the blood and the water with his sop, knowing that Jesus was prepared for his burial, making mention to remember that woman who pre prepared his body before his burial. And he was anointed with all spike nard, all these uh, beautiful spices, brothers and sisters. And notice that he also was uh, uh, crucified without the camp, and that those in which believed on him looked on him. Those in which had faith in him were, were saved, but they continued in him. Does that make sense? So we see here that he's talking about the works of the law of Moses. That you're not justified by presenting your bullocks or your goats or your ashes of an heifer or your keeping your Torah that God accounted as righteousness for you. It's because you believed in him first. It's because you believed in God, knowing this thing too. Also, the predestination of the election, it was nothing evil Esau or Jacob had done in their mother's womb. Nothing good or evil, but it was according to the election of grace. That God it says, you know, something about willingly, he was going to, whatever willeth or whatever, it didn't, didn't matter whether it willeth or runneth. It was according to the will of God. So we need to look at everything and know everything and, and, and discern what is Jesus, what was these, uh, David talking about? What is Paul talking about? Right, brothers and sisters? Right here, because he says right here, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. I want to cover all these things, brothers and sisters. So again, David spoke of this blessedness in Romans 4, 6, 8. Even as David also described it, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. And we just previously went through that, brothers and sisters. Because you can also see here in Titus, brothers and sisters, chapter 3, 5, that we're not by the works of righteousness which we have done. So there's nothing that you did. I put it, uh, Apostle Paul as an example. Uh, also for a sinner, too, out there. It's nothing that you have done, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us because of justification. It's ju we're justified by his grace. Look at the book of Romans. But because one man had sinned, judgment, death, and sin entered into the world, but by one man's gift, the gift of Christ, one man, the last Adam, that all things he had justified, uh, because we, can't, we became all sinners because of one man's disobedience, all were made sinners. But by one man's death, one man's justification, onto because he was laid down for offenses or sins and raised up for our justification, we would be made the righteous in Christ if we abide in him. Doesn't mean that, oh, I'm a sinner, I can continue in sin, oh, the blood of Jesus covers me. No, that doesn't mean that. It means that he, in which purchased you with his blood, redeemed you from the earth, redeemed you from your sins. You ought to crucify that old man, because he, we, in which are dead to sin, can no longer live unto sin. How could you say that, you know, uh, uh, grace, that his grace may abound? God forbid, Paul said, that you say, oh, uh, I'm saved by grace, but God forbid we will flee sin. He goes, you, in which are dead to sin, should no longer live therein to sin. All right, brothers and sisters, you are dead with Christ. Your body's dead because he's in you. So we have to look at everything in context. All right, brothers and sisters. So again, brothers and sisters, these are called the works, the dead works. These are works of religion, those who are entangled to the yoke of bondage, who desire to be debtors to the law, those in which uh, um, know that the law worketh death. It was the, uh, the law was given for the knowledge of sin to show you you're a sinner in need, the transgressor in need of a savior, and that those in which go back to their ways, they are also uh, back, uh, they're, they're going to be uh, judged as transgressors if they break the law. Again, brothers and sisters, so now those in which abide in Christ, and that's why he says you have to continue in me because without me you can do nothing. In John 15, 1, he says that you may bear a much fruit. 
You want to be that good seed that bears a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold fruit for the kingdom of heaven, allowing Jesus to purge and prune you to bear more fruits, brothers and sisters. But again, this is why Jesus has to purge you from an evil conscience, sprinkling clean water, being clean in your flesh and your spirit by his pure water, because he himself is pure. So those in which are pure keep themselves pure too. No, notice that if you keep yourself, the wicked one toucheth him not. So I want you guys to understand the difference. This could be often confusing uh, when man teaches it, but I'm trying to make it so simple, and I hope you guys can show me that you understand, brothers and sisters. Okay, so again, just because God has imputed his righteousness onto all men when he said you are justified by grace through faith, when he says that it was his uh, righteous, because no longer now do we need that law in which was given to Moses when we have the law of God, the righteousness of God, Jesus Christ, the perfect law of liberty that redeemed us from those works in which were under the law, because that law was the schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. So therefore those, and now we are under uh, faith by grace in Christ. But I want you guys to understand something. Just because Christ has justified us and imputed his righteousness onto, you know, men in which were made sinners under the first Adam, let me tell you something. That does not give you the liberty or the privilege to continue in your sin or your adulteries or fornications and say I'm covered by grace or covered by the blood of Jesus. Paul said, God forbid we sin. All right, brothers and sisters, God forbid. How could you say that? You know, do we just uh, say that grace may abound? Right? Because it is grace that purchased us that sin may abound. No, brothers and sisters, I know that though uh, where sin was greater or was great, but uh, grace uh, was greater to abound. I understand this. They may make mention of these things, but I also want to cover this. Brothers and sisters, one man's obedience, Jesus Christ, many were made righteous, but that does not mean that we can sin because we're saved by grace. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, verses 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He says, God forbid, the blood of Jesus does not cover your habitual or continual sin unless you repent. He understands if you make mistakes. He says, confess them to me and I'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But he says that his blood will not cover your habitual or continual sin. You can't be lethargic. In the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have to know that this is a continual warfare. That this is a continual fight for your soul every day. Alright brothers and sisters. So again uh, brothers and sisters. Paul said how shall we any longer live therein to sin. If we're dead to sin. How should we continually willfully sin. Brothers and sisters. I'm going to make mention right now. A lot of you guys don't know how to right, rightfully divide the word of God. The Bible says in Hebrews 10.26. Uh, again, so somebody might say anybody who says they have no sin is a liar. Yeah, that's if, it, if you're saying, like say you're in your dead works, uh, like a Torah keeper or a person in which is religious, says, I don't need God, right? I'm a good person. I don't sin. I don't kill. And we already went through that with the spiritual law and the things in which I told you what was the difference, how Jesus is the fulfillment of the law, the spiritual uh, law of the, uh, of the faith, brothers and sisters. But Jesus told us through James, Pure and undefiled religion is this, to visit the orphans and the fatherless, right? To comfort those in which are afflicted, to, right, brothers and sisters? To keep himself unspotted from the world, to make sure his tongue, um, he has brittled his mouth, right? Because if he uh, does not brittle his mouth, then his religion is in vain, brothers and sisters. So the, these are people who consider themselves religious. Oh, I do all these things, I'm a good person. No. That's when it means like, oh, you know, you are lying if you say you have no sin. But if you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God like the Jew and the Gentile have, he's faithful to forgive you, all right? But you got to do your part. you got to really mean that you're sorry. Because if you're sorry, sorry doesn't mean like go and do it again. He understands that we're fighting the flesh. I understand the flesh uh, uh, lust against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh, and these two are contrary to one another, that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you continue to walk after the spirit, you're no longer under the law. The works of the flesh, as I mentioned, those are the works of the law. Galatians 5, 17, 19. But the, the works of the spirit, I'm sorry, the, the fruit of the spirit is walking in the spirit that you would not be subject or in bondage to the yoke of bondage. The works of the flesh continue to walk in spirit. So, brothers and sisters, I want to go through here. Hebrews chapter 10, 26 to 31 says this. For we, if we willfully, listen, if we sin willfully, 
after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries to American gospel Christianity. No, God is not okay with a Laodicean church's lifestyle. He's not okay with your comfort, your comfortable lifestyle. He's going to shake this world again, and the earth. Everything's going to shake again. He's going to wake people up. He says that will devour the adversaries. He that despiseth Moses' law. He says they died without mercy in the old covenant, those in which despised Moses' law, the one in which was given to Moses, the Ten Commandments. He says right here, they died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Can you imagine? No mercy. He that doesn't show mercy, this is blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You don't show mercy, you will not have mercy. Mercy rejoiceth against judgment. How He says right here, suppose ye. He says right here, how much to our punishment, suppose ye shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden under the foot of the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified, the blood that Jesus sanctifieth you, and redeemeth you, and purchased you with. He says, wherewith he was sanctified, an un unholy thing. He sanctified an unholy thing with his blood, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace, and you trampled unto that holy one in which cleansed an un unholy thing, and you trampled on the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto the Lord. He says right here, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again the Lord shall judge his people. And Jesus said, Judgment begins in the house of God first. All right, brothers and sisters, and then where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? He says right here, It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. This is serious. A lot of you guys have this idea and knowledge, but you guys don't put that into practice. You might know these things, you might hear these things, but what are you going to do when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ? Your life is a vapor. He says you should say, God willing, if we even should make it tomorrow. God willing, what is your life? But a, but a short little vapor, a little time you have here. Right, so did you know? that your works will be made manifest to so those who say you don't need to do works but did you know that you get rewards do you know that you have rewards on the day you see the day spring or the the, the day the morning uh, star jesus christ do you guys know that you will see you will reap those things in which you have so i'm sorry so uh, reap those things in which you have sown uh, paul the apostle made sure he didn't labor on another man's foundation that those in which labor on their work, that's why I do my studies. I labor in my work to rejoice in my work, not another man's works. Did you know in 1 Corinthians 3, 13, 15, it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest. See that? Every man's works will be made manifest. For the day in which is Jesus, the day spring, shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire knowing that Jesus, God is a consuming fire in the book of Hebrews, all right? And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abideth which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Do you not want rewards? Do you want to just go to, you know, the judgment seat and be like, Hi, Jesus, all I did was believe on you, but I just want to be saved with no crown, nothing. Imagine going, barely making making it to heaven, barely being saved, and you have no crown, you have nothing to show for it. Imagine every brother and sister you see there has crowns, has all these jewels, precious stones, silver and gold, all these, you know, beautiful, like, uh, gifts from God, and you have nothing. It's burnt. And you barely made it. He says, uh, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. So again, your work will suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet, uh, saved yet so as by fire. And it's very sad if you say, or at least I would make it to heaven, but imagine having nothing to show. What did you do for Jesus? What did you do for the king that you claimed you loved? I mean, you have people who don't even love Jesus or know Jesus, and they do more labor for 
the, you know, the gods of the elements of this world, the gods in which are no gods at all. So again, Jesus Christ was doing works. I mean, I just went through that in the beginning with you guys. Jesus told us the only way you can abide in, and bear fruit is by abiding in him. Because without him, without abiding in the vine, you can do nothing. You're not going to do anything without him. He's got to be with you or else you would be under the law. You would try to be doing it by the works of the law, by your own strength. And there's no way you can do it without him. You have no strength to overcome it. You have no strength without Jesus Christ. You can't even complete a mission or his will without him in you. That's why it says you need the spirit of God in you because without it, you are none of his. So brothers and sisters, we already went through those works in which uh, we've seen uh, right here. So let's, let's go right here, brothers and sisters. Uh, in the book of Romans, 13 through, uh, 13, 3, uh, 13, 3, 4, so it says, For rulers are not a terror to good works. So those ones in which God has says to submit to them in, in fear, because those rulers, those magistrates, punish the evildoers. So it says right here, and they reward those in which are good, or those in which they're not a terror to those of good works. <laughs> Do you see that right there in Romans 13, 3, 4? They're not a terror to good works to the righteous, but to the evil. He says they are ministers of God. For he bear, he says right here, for they are to be afraid of, because they are ministers of God, but he beareth of, uh, not the sword in vain, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So again, let, we have to be subject to certain authorities, but not those in which, you know, uh, corrupt the word of God and, you know, twist it to their destruction about the mark. All right, brothers and sisters, again, 1 Peter 2.12 having a conversation honest among the Gentiles. He says that where areas they speak against you as evildoers, he says that they may be, that they may by your good works, look at 1 Peter 2.12, by your good works in which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Yes, brothers and sisters, this is very biblical. 1 John 3.12, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. So Cain slew his brother Abel. Why did he do this? Why? Why did Cain just, you know, want to kill his brother? He said, when God said, where's thy brother? Where's your brother? And he said, am I my brother's keeper? He killed his brother Abel. Why? Because his brother's works were righteous and his works were evil. And I want, to, I want you guys to understand how you can tell the difference between those who are God's seed and those in which are Satan's seed. Satan's children. The tares. Because I'll tell you right now, not as Cain who was of that wicked one. So Cain was of the wicked one. He says, and slew his brother. And wherefore he slew him? Because his own works were evil. So Cain's works, these people who say you only have works, their works are evil. He says right here, because they don't have anything to show for their faith or their love for Jesus. They're like that person in which is not faithful to their husband or wife. Imagine me not doing nothing for my husband. Are you kidding me? Imagine, oh honey, I love you. I'm not going to cook you anything. You know, or I'm not going to do nothing for you. Like, really, you just love in word but not in deed? He says, those who come against you for preaching, Jesus says right here, for sound doctrine, those in which are coming against you, for saying that you're adding to salvation and preaching works, and that is legalism. And the, these, he says, these people are called heathens. They walk after their vanities, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, alienated. Because the blindness that's in their hearts. They don't know me, says Jesus. They don't know the Father either. You must repent speedily. Because he's, the judge standeth at the door. Uh, this is not going to law, uh, with, uh, to law with my brethren. This is because we know that the judge stands at the door. We don't want to be found condemned by the judge. But this is for they in which are perverting and twisting the scriptures to the destruction and casting lies against God's serv or casting uh, the names of the Lord's servants and calling them all sorts of evils. Those, Jesus says, those in which we just discussed about Cain being, uh, you know, who is that of the wicked one? He says, tell them this. Read Jude chapter 1, verses 11. He says right here, this is what it says unto them. Woe unto them, Jesus says, for they have gone in the way of Cain. He says, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam, 
for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. 2 Timothy chapter 4.14. Did you know Paul the Apostle said this about Alexander Coppersmith? Uh, he says right here, he did him much evil. Alexander Coppersmith did Paul the Apostle much evil. And look what Paul says. He says, and may the Lord reward him according to his works. So those in which, you know, are saying all sorts of evil, you know, may the Lord uh, reward them according to their works in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In John, uh, 3 John, chapter 1, verses 10, John also remembers Diotrephus. You see that? The one in which withstood him and had malicious praying words against him. John said, he withstood him, them. He says, I will remember him. I will remember him. I will remember his deeds, he said, that he doeth. So these are people, not that are lost sinners. These are the ones in the churches and which withstand us and have prayed in malicious words against us. John even says, I will remember them. I'll remember their deeds, right? Revelation 18.6 says, Jesus rewards and doubles onto her according to to Babylon, he doubles her works. What do you mean he doubles her works? He doubles according to her works. And what she had done, the one that sits back and thinks that she's lived deliciously, Babylon. Mystery, Babylon, the harlot of um, all nations, mother harlot, has a cup of abominations in her hand. Jesus says also, I hate the works of the Nicolaitans, or Nicolaitans, or whatever they're called. In uh, Revelation 2.22, I hate those works of the Nicolaitans that you have, that you carry, brothers and sisters. So those are deeds, works. I hate those deeds. Jude 1.15, Jesus says, I come with ten thousands of my saints to execute judgment on the ungodly sinners, that they have ungodly deeds, those in which have committed ungodly deeds. What is another word for deeds? Works. So there's works, evil works and good works, bad fruit and good fruit, God's seed and Satan's seed, God's children and Satan's children. Revelation 16, 11, they which were going through the vials of God's wraths and judgments did not repent of their pains or sores. Now they might think, oh, see, God, God forgives those in which took the mark. No, they fail to read the, the, the top of it where it says, uh, like some scriptures before, where it talks about the sun, God having the power to take the sun and the heat and all these things in which scorched them, that God had the power to remove these plagues from them and they did not give him uh, glory or nor repent. So notice that when the sun scorches you, you break out in blisters and sores. And they still didn't repent, brothers and sisters, of their deeds. What's another word for deeds? Works. So again, brothers and sisters, you either have fruit on to life, on to holiness, or fruit on to death. So you're still not convinced that Jesus renders unto every man according to his works. Can we just go through what Jesus says to the churches here in Revelation according to their works and their deeds? Can we just cover that really quick? So people can be convinced that we may gain the gains here to oppose themselves. How Jesus remembers every single work of these churches from Ephesus, from Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Let's see what he says in Revelation 2.9. Jesus says to, um, I'm sorry, 2.5, to Ephesus. He says, he remembers, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. And repent, and do. For, uh, he goes, do thy first works. Your first faith. Go back to your first works. He says, unless he takes that candlestick from you. Let's see what he says to, we weren't ready to see that he gives according to their works. Uh, Revelation 2, 5, no, I'm sorry, 2, 9. Jesus says to Smyrna, I know thy works. Oh, he knows, what does he know? Your works. What did you do for God? He says, I know your tribulations and poverty. I know, uh, he says that you are rich. So Jesus says that these are their works, tribulations, poverty, and uh, he says, but you are rich. You're not like the church of Laodicea, which is opposite, which thinks, which thinks, you know, they're rich when they're poor and miserable and blind and naked and, you know, um, wretched and miserable as we have been when we were first lukewarm. 
But he also tells this church right here in Revelation 2.13, Jesus says to the church of Pergamos, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And you guys, it's interesting because I was like, what do you mean? I was like, like I was awake at like 6 in the morning. I was like, wait a minute. I was writing all these things for hours. I was like, Jesus, what do you mean? Satan's seat. What does that mean? Where is he sitting? Because he's like, you remember my faithful a servant Antipas where he was martyred? And I was like, okay, so Antipas, where was he martyred? So I looked and it said Turkey. And I'm like, Satan's seat is in Turkey? Hmm, no wonder why my people, Albania, would go to war with the Ottoman Empire who converted everybody, like a majority of Albanians, my nationality, my culture, they converted them to Islam. We were Christians, brothers and sisters, and some relative of mine from my father's uh, side is a, is a hero. <laughs> He's a hero, and he uh, was um, trained in military um, tactics. This man was a military commander. And Jesus had revealed to me that he is related to me because I didn't believe it at first. I was like, yeah, right. And he's like, no, he surely is. And this man was adopted by Muslims, by Muslim Ottoman or Turks and stuff. And they gave him, and he grew up with these Muslims and these Turks. And then from then, he grew up learning their language, learning their tactics. I mean, how, how smart is that to learn your um, opponents, to study their, their, their moves, their next move, what they're going to do, to study them, like to be friends with the opponents, the military commander that he was, a smart genius. And he was like, all right, he's related to my father's side because my father's father was from Kruya. All right, brothers and sisters, if anybody's Albanian that's following me, that knows my dad's from Duras and, you know, I'm... You know, from uh, Albania, which I was born there, but I came to the United States very young. But however, it's just my little bit of my background. So he studied his opponents, and that's what's genius about this man. So he then learned uh, the, uh, the military warfare, or the war uh, uh, fair, how to defeat the enemies at the time, brothers and sisters. And therefore, uh, Jesus was telling me about how, how he was able to study the enemy, how he learned his tactics and their moves, and how he studied those in which opposed Christianity. And then that man, um, the one in which was, uh, um, I think he was taken from his, fa his father at a very young age by the Turks. What happened was he started to uh, uh, go against them as he learned their strategies, their warfares. Uh, he learned their tactics and then he went against them and he started to fight for Christianity, for the faith of Christians, brothers and sisters. I mean, that was brilliant. You know what I'm saying? So he turned against the Ottoman Empire and he didn't forget where he came from as a Christian, all right? Although he was um, adopted into a Muslim kind of a, a family or raised by Muslims. He learned, he learned their, their ways that he would know how to fight these Ottomans. And he beat many of them many times. Like he lost like two wars, brothers and sisters, but he won many. And again, so he was a very, he's a national hero in my country. All right, and I didn't believe that I had any kind of like re like relation to him because I was like, yeah, right, me like me being related to a, a military commander or a hero. I was like, wow, Jesus. And then when Jesus, I made I I think I bothered Jesus so many times by asking him, Jesus, is this true? Is my family telling me the truth? Is he really related to me? Because I'm, you know, I was raised poor. This guy is a a noble man. How? And Jesus said, yeah, he showed me. And never mind. Anyways, I'm jumping off the topic. Anyways. So, brothers and sisters, Jesus says to the church of Pergamos, I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. So I was like, oh, hmm. There are like the, like this, I'm not going to say all these people because there's some Christians in Turkey. I'm saying, but these people are uh, Muslim, Islam, Muslim. A lot of them are against uh, Jews and Christians, brothers and sisters. So I was like, hmm, where Satan's seed is. So I was like, that's in Turkey. Is that where his seed is? Anyways, I don't know. I'm just speculating. So he says, I know thy works. So again, we see Jesus saying, I know your works. Okay, so Revelation 2.19 says, Jesus says to the church of Thyatira, I know thy works and charity. So again, Jesus tells the church of Thyatira, I know your works. So again, what is that works? Your charity, that's a spirit from God. 
uh, the bond of perfectness. He says, and service, your service towards others, meaning like the ministry that you have towards uh, his people, edifying the saints, perfecting the saints, building the body of saints, and faith, and which is a gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of faith. And he goes, and thy patience and also is a, a gift, uh, and it's a her that she has her perfect uh, work in you, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing more than the first. So he goes there for to repeat that he knows the works. Also, Revelation 2.23, Jesus says he will kill Jezebel's children as he gave me that prophecy and told me to share with those in which are uh, uh, leading his people astray, those false prophets uh, who are just, you know, uh, deceiving his people. Uh, they're going to be held accountable. Those ones in which are doing it purpose, like with the intent of deceiving. I'm not talking about those in which they don't even know what they're doing, like the deceivers, like they're, they're like deceive themselves, deceiving others, because that's what's going to happen in the end days. It says man's heart should wax cold, deceiving and being deceived. But I'm talking about those who purposely deceive others with the intent of knowing they're leading the flock astray. They're doing it with ill will. He says that he will kill our children, and he says right here, Jezebel's children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he, he says, which searcheth the reins and hearts, and it will give according to every one of you, according to your works. So he's going to search everybody's reins and their hearts, and he says, I will give according to every one of your works, according to your works. So that's also in Revelation 2.23. Revelation 2.26 says, Jesus says, He know, he that overcometh uh, to the church of Thyatira and keepeth his works, keepeth his works, unto him you will give power over the nations. He says right here, Revelation 3.1, Jesus says um, to the church of Sardis, He knows thy works, that those things in which they are not, um, they are strengthening, those things in which remain, they need to die, he needs to, those works need to be put to death, those things in which have to be put to death, remain in your life. He says, I have not found your works perfect. I have a teaching about the seven churches. Please check it out, brothers and sisters. You can even also look at the description below. I've put something together that shows their pros and their cons. So the, thou hast the name that thou livest and art dead to the glory of God. Obviously, it's him that teaches me. I, I never take the glory. It goes to God alone and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And he has not found thy works perfect before God. So he tells the church of Sardis because they are strengthening those things in which remain that should not remain. They should be put off to death. He says, I have not found your works perfect before God. See that, brothers and sisters? Revelation 3, 8 right here says, Jesus tells the church of Philadelphia, he knows thy works. He says, I know your works. And uh, he and which has set it before thee an open door that no man may close. And he goes, I know you have a little strength, but you've kept the patience of my word, and I will keep you at the uh, before the hour of uh, temptation, because thou hast not denied my name. So he knows your works, again, to the church of Philadelphia. Also, you can see here, um, Revelation 3.15, Jesus tells the church of Laodicea, he knows their works, that they are neither hot or cold nor hot, and that he would have them, he would work that they were cold or hot, and because they are neither, he will spew them out of his mouth because they're lukewarm. So again, he knows their works, that they're not neither hot or cold or lukewarm. So again, those are works that he knows about every seven churches, in which are, us, are at his right hand, seven stars, seven candlesticks, seven angels, seven churches, lampstands, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he in which uh, was dead and now is alive forevermore. The uh, Alpha the be uh, in the beginning and the ending. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. The first and the last. So Jesus is coming with his reward to give on accordingly to every man as, it, uh, as he hath done. So he says right here, also, Revelation 14, 13. And Jesus told me to say this. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yeah, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, listen to this, those in which die in the Lord Jesus Christ first, that they may less, I'm sorry, rest in their labors, and their works do follow them. Notice that also in Proverbs 31, or not Pro, yeah, Proverbs 31, where it talks about the virtuous woman, it says that the works of her hands will praise her at the gates. So notice that their works follow them. Your works, what you've done for Jesus, those books are going to be opened and you're going to be judged according to those things you have done, whether good or evil. Revelation 20, 12, 13. And I saw the dead, small and great. I saw, 
um, he says right here, stand before God. So he says, I saw the dead, the small and great. Stand before God and the books were open. So there's books that are going to be open when you stand before God. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. So there's going to be a book of life there that's going to be opened. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the, in the books according to their works. Revelation 20, 12, 13 says you are going to be judged according to your works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. So now the sea gives up the dead and those in which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to his works, evil or good. The books are going to be opened. Every man is going to give an, uh, uh, render unto God according for the works they have done in this life. Now when we were talking about the works of the law, when he says it, when uh, David was talking about now imputing uh, the righteousness of God onto, you know, onto man uh, without works, because God's righteousness came upon us without any works of the law, it was because we had faith in Christ. But when some people take these and misconstrue these scriptures, right here, as I've mentioned, it was talking about the law right here, the dead works, dead religions of men, brothers and sisters. Knowing here in Galatians 2.16, knowing a man is not justified by the works of the law, like Moses or the Torah or any kind of faith, uh, false faiths, but by faith in Jesus Christ, we're justified, we're made righteous, because Ephesians 2.8 tells us, but we're also his workmanship, and we're also vessels of mercy. We're also his good workmanship, brothers and sisters. It says right here that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. He also says, uh, Paul is speaking to the Jews of the circumcision, in which we're also entangled to the yoga bondage, as I mentioned earlier, in Galatians 2.4. That Jesus, uh, those the Jews who desired to be under the law or debtors to the law, and if they did not remain in those things and they had broken one point, they were guilty of breaking them all. All right. So Abraham again was justified because he believed God first. So don't ever misconstrue my text or whatever I say, because I I, I believe we're justified by faith, by grace. Not of works, lest any man should boast, but as that you become a, a, a fruit-bearing Christian, abiding in the vine, you should bear fruit and do th those things in which are meat or pleasing unto the Lord, by abiding in the vine to bear much fruit with Christ. He also says here in Galatians 3.6 uh, that the heathens also would be justified by faith and not by the works of the law. Also seeing that they are law unto themselves, knowing that the law is written in our hearts and our minds that we're under the new covenant and which is the blood of of Jesus Christ all right so again and then they would say that you're adding to uh, salvation by calling the uh, uh, baptism works are you serious Jesus said he commanded that all should be baptized even through his apostles who were doing miracles are you saying that uh, uh, Peter was doing miracles when he, he by the power of God by the glory of God raised a dead woman or raised a damsel to life are you saying that he was doing works of course he was doing works by the Holy Ghost doing miracles those are works by the Holy Ghost so again, brothers and sisters, we have to know what we're talking about. All right, brothers and sisters? So Paul saw they in which were under the law were under the curse. So every man in which is under the works of the Torah, the law, or any kind of religion is under the curse of God. He repeats himself again in Galatians 3.11 that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, that the just shall live by faith. So again, we live by faith. So it's not, he's not talking about the works in which you abide in Christ and produce. He's talking about those in which you think they're justified by the things they do for God without Christ. So then also, Paul speaks of the two covenants. I already went through this many times. Two allegories of Hagar and Sarah, the bond woman and the free woman. And uh, also um, this, the, law of the, the law and the spirit of life, and which is the law of Christ, and which is the yoke of, I'm sorry, the uh, perfect law of liberty and not the yoke of bondage. So I already went through that with you guys many times in Galatians 4, 22, 31. Paul says these, um, which are circumcised, he said, is a debtor to do the whole law in Galatians 5, 3. And that they have fallen from grace, whoever desires or, or wants to be justified by the law has fallen from uh, grace in Galatians 5, 4. Paul also mentions the works of the flesh, as I mentioned so many times in Galatians 5, 17, because those works are the works of the law not the works of the Holy Spirit. When you're bearing fruit, the nine fruit of the Spirit, or the nine administrations, operations, diversities, and gifts that Christ has administered to every man according to the measure of his faith. So we see also in Ephesians, we are saved by grace, not, through, uh, not of ourselves. We're saved by grace. Are you saved through faith and not of yourselves? 
not of the law, not of doing deeds to be saved. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, uh, unto good works, which God hath uh, before ordained that we should walk in them, Ephesians 2, 8, 10. So we see that we're his workmanship unto good works now, because we're in Christ Jesus, created in Christ Jesus. We're to abide in him and bear more fruit, much fruit, for him, brothers and sisters, fruit of holiness, righteousness, love, joy, peace, patience, um, uh, whatever it is for the Lord Jesus, as he mentioned to certain churches, like their poverty, he knows their works, their poverty, their tribulations, their charities, their faith, their service towards uh, the, uh, the, the saints in the, the church. So also seeing that Jesus uh, said here, I am the vine in John 15, 1. Uh, he says, I am the vine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that uh, beareth not fruit is taken away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. So if you are bearing fruit, Jesus purges you to bear more fruit. All right? Now, ye are clean through the word. So you've been sanctified and washed by the regeneration, by the renewing of the Holy Ghost, the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, and by the word of God. Because Jesus says, they too, and which are the other fold, will be sanctified by thy word. Their word is the word of God. They will be clean. If you abide in his word, let his seed remain in you. So you can be washed and cleansed with the renewing and regeneration of the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, so right here. He says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can he except he abide in me. I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, he says, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast, he says right here, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and man gathered them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. So please don't be that slothful servant and say, and say that, you know, I don't need works. You're, you would be dead in your sins and your works would be dead too. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. He would pluck those things in which he has not planted. The works of the law known, um, are known as dead works. Or like, you know, those in which have been purged from dead works. Known as the law, whatever kind of things in which are dead religion to God. Right? Without Jesus, without faith in Christ, without abiding in him to bear much fruit. So again, brothers and sisters, uh, the law of Moses should not be confused with adding or I'm sorry, abiding in the vine. Jesus to bear with, to, to abide in the vine with Jesus to bear much good fruit and to be purged and pruned to bear more fruit. Jesus tells us we shall know a tree by its fruit. So the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all that believe, for there is no difference. And now it is also manifested uh, by the law and prophets. Romans 3, 21, 22, there's no difference between the Jew or a Gentile. A lot of people in Israel fell because of their unbelief. We're going to get there. Paul was um, um, speaking about the law, and so is David. Those things in which are the deeds or the works of the law of Moses. He says, for no flesh being justified in his sight, for by the law there is the knowledge of sin. So the law was to show us the transgressions in which the, we were sinners and we needed a savior and that one was going to come from the seed of Abraham and the root of Jesse and he was going to redeem all those things in which have been um, broken. He's, he's a restored the branch. So we know that Jesus is able to reconcile all things back to him. So however, anyway, so he says, Paul, I put Paul didn't say for us to not maintain good works because he told us to maintain good works in the book of Titus in, in the book of James. It's also recorded by uh, the servant of God, the half brother of Jesus. It was directed towards those who desire to be debtors in, uh, uh, of the circumcision or of the law, to be debtors to the law. And in, in we know that it didn't profit nothing whether circumcision or of the uncircumcision. It faileth nothing but faith by charity or a new creature in Christ. So again, Paul says in Romans 3.28, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So again, we are justified by faith. I never ever said that we're justified by our works, so don't ever twist my... Uh, my uh, uh, words, brothers and sisters, and don't put words in my mouth because we're justified by faith, by believing onto God. Therefore, that's why we are imputed the righteousness of God. But therefore, when we abide in him, we do those things in which please him by bearing fruit and doing those things in which uh, faith and works is, is like word and deed. It's like a car with gas. It is like prayer and fasting. It's like your heart and your brain in one temple. All right, brothers and sisters. Because again, so if you don't have that, it's like, for example, just like the spirit or the body is dead without the spirit, James says, the body is dead without the spirit of God, so are, so is faith without works. It's dead, being alone. All right, brothers and sisters, it's a false balance. You need both balance. You need faith and works, just like God is a balance, brothers and sisters. So again, so this is where uh, Paul says right here, let's read everything in context. 
brothers and sisters. So again, we see here, no flesh. So it says if, it doesn't say when. It says for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God, right? So he was in glory and doing what he did for uh, uh, God for, uh, by presenting um, Isaac at the altar. It was because he believed on God. That's why God imputed righteousness and he was made the father of many nations. So again, it is the gift of God, right? It's a gift of God. You can't say anything, do anything to earn it. It's a gift, brothers and sisters. So let's not confuse the works of the law in which are considered dead works, as I've made mention, in which no, uh, man thinks are justified by works, not by faith. So these people think they're justified by doing these things without Jesus. They're wrong. They are going to go to hell if they don't repent, brothers and sisters. So again, and uh, they have fallen from grace because they are debtors to do the whole law. And if they break at one point, they're guilty of them all. That's sad. Paul didn't do anything um, righteous and he obtained mercy because he says, I did it in my unbelief, unbelief here in scriptures. He did it in unbelief and God had mercy on him. <clears throat> so again, don't you understand? He says right here. So therefore he was not reckoned of works, but rather of grace. Do you understand the context? Israel sought it not by faith, and that's why they were cut off. All right, brothers and sisters, they were, the severity happened onto them because their heart of unbelief. They did not, uh, they didn't seek it by faith, but it, as if it were the works of the law. They didn't seek it by faith in Jesus. They sought it as if they were works of the Torah, the law, right? And uh, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone, knowing that Jesus is a stumbling, uh, a rock of offense to many of them, a stumbling stone to them. Romans 9.32. Romans 9.11 was speaking of the election which might stand not of works. So like Esau and um, Jacob not doing anything good or evil in their mother's womb. But it was a called according to the election of grace. So it's nothing they did. It's because right here in Romans 9.16. So it is not of him that willeth or runneth. Nothing you do or say. But of God that sheweth mercy, because he has mercy on whomsoever he'll have mercy on, and compassion on whomsoever he has compassion on. All right, brothers and sisters, Romans 11, 6 says, And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. All right, to the nation of Israel that fell, because they sought it not by faith, but but of works. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. You understand? Otherwise, work is no more work. So again, regards to Israel, here um, in Romans 9.32, Israel sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. Therefore, it is not reckoned of grace, but of works. And grace is no longer grace, but this is of works. But they stumbled at that of the stumbling stone, which is Jesus Christ. So again, Jesus reconciled us back to him in Colossians 1.21. It says that we were sometimes alienated and enemies in our minds by wicked works. So what did Jesus do? He purged us from dead works, from wicked works. Thoughts from an evil conscience, sprinkling us clean from an evil conscience, from dead works by the blood of Jesus that was shed at the cross at Calvary, that we may be reconciled and have peace with God, that we don't have blood of bullocks or goats or ashes of an heifer to be clean or to have, because there will always be a remembrance yearly uh, if we if we didn't have Jesus, a remembrance of sins. If we needed a high priest to go into the holy most holy places to atone for our sins yearly, there was always a remembrance of sins, a conscience of sins, even for the high priest. So now we have Jesus' blood that cleanses our conscience. If we have a spiritual mind, the mind of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, which is life and peace. So 2 Timothy right here says, 1-9, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works. You can also see that recorded, and not by the works of righteousness in Titus 3-5, but by his mercy he has saved us. So he says right here, not according to our works, but according to his uh, purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. All right, so our works don't mean nothing. All right, so again, like meaning before Christ, before faith in Christ, whatever you have done, it doesn't matter. Jesus chooses whoever pleases him, whoever he accounts worthy of the kingdom of this calling, whatever uh, pleases the, God the Father. All right, Hebrews chapter 9, 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, it says right here, offered himself uh, without conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So we know that Jesus Christ was a sacrificial lamb and which was well-pleasing to God and which gives us the access or privilege to enter into through the holy, uh, holy of holies through the blood of the lamb. All right, so Hebrews, as I mentioned, 6.1, again, I'll lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works. We don't want to keep going over this. 
brothers and sisters. So again, dead works, for example, were the carnal ordinances or carnal commandments of men, tabernacle of Moses, as I've covered in that uh, teaching, the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, uh, part two, uh, talking about the tabernacle of Moses and the body of Jesus Christ. I mean, they're two different things. Uh, it was always a foreshadow of the old things of a good, better things to come in, which is Jesus. Divers washings like meats and drinks, blood of goats and calves, blood, blood of bulls and goats, ashes of an heifer, and a purified of flesh. And so again, so that thing in which was uh, 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 purifying, sanctified the unclean uh, thing in which was pur purifying the flesh, the blood of goats and bullocks and heifer. That was like able to sanctify or clean the flesh, the purifying of the flesh. But now we have Jesus who purifies our conscience. Because remember, Paul said he served the Lord with his mind, the law of his mind, but his body were members were warring against him because of strong, how strong it was. God's law was so um, holy, so good, so just, and um, there was nothing evil about it. But it was his uh, his members, the sin in his his members that were doing those things. And it was no longer him; it was the sin in him. But you got to take those members onto subjection daily and bring them on, onto obedience, righteousness, and onto the Spirit of God every day. So again, this is talking about you know dead works like the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall, a temple. They don't have a temple to sacrifice an animals. That's why they go to the Wailing Wall. I hope I made this clear to you guys. I love you guys. God bless each one of you and your loved ones. I hope you guys understood the difference between dead works, works, and faith, how they go together, and not the works of the law, in which no man is justified by that, by the Torah or whatever, the old covenant. I love you guys. God bless you guys. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.